Hi, this is Lee Purcell, and you're listening to TV Confidential. Ed Robertson welcoming you back to TV Confidential, a radio talk show about television that is pleased to welcome back actress and comedian Jerry Jewell. Jerry Jewell, born with cerebral palsy. Jerry shattered the glass ceiling for individuals with disabilities when Norman Lear cast her as Cousin Jerry on the long-running sitcom The Facts of Life, making Jerry the very first person with a disability to appear in a recurring role on a network TV series. Jerry Jewell also shattered perceptions when David Milch cast her on the hit Golden Globe and Emmy Award winning HBO series Deadwood. Jerry will be reprising her role as Jewel, the cleaning woman on Deadwood in the long awaited Deadwood sequel film, which, as of this recording, is scheduled to premiere Friday, May 31st. We will ask Jerry about that and more in just a second. But first, Jerry Jewel, welcome back to our program. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be back. I realize that HBO has been very secretive about the uh, upcoming Deadwood sequel, Jerry. So I probably know... They have. Yes. Well, you understand, I have to ask you this question anyway. What can you tell us about the movie without giving too much away? Well, I can tell you that it takes place 10 years later after the series ended. So there's a time span that happens, and you see the characters older and where they are 10 years later. And Jewel is still alive. (laughs) (laughs) How she's living is beyond me, but she's doing well. And of course, that's a natural segue to find out how she's doing. You got to tune in on Friday, March, uh, Friday, May 31st on HBO, HBO Go, HBO In Demand, and all the other HBO platforms. Now, let me ask you this, Jerry. For someone like me, and for listeners like me who maybe watch Deadwood casually but did not watch yeah. every single episode, do you need to do a deep dive and go back and watch all the episodes in order to follow the movie, or does it stand on its own? Yes, you do need to go back. Okay. Follow it. All right. And I have to tell you, the movie is absolutely phenomenal. It, it blew everyone away who was involved with it, including myself. (laughs) And and truthfully, I will say this. I had spinal cord surgery on July 12th. Yeah. And the surgeon misjudged how long my recovery period was going to be. He told me that I would be back to my normal (laughs) in about two or three weeks. And... It didn't happen. So when I got the script, I panicked. I was like, oh, my God, how can I do this? I'm not even recovered from surgery yet. And I called David Milch, and I called his representative and said, can you please give a message and tell him that I had surgery in July. I was in rehab. I'm taking physical therapy, occupational therapy, trying to get my ability back, and I'm not there yet. So if he wants to recast you, that's fine with me. And and the person said to me, are you sure you want to say that to him? And I said, yes, because it's the truth. And David called me the next day. And he said, Jay, there's only one jewel, and it's you. And if we have to rewrite the script for your physical ability, we'll do that. If you need a wheelchair accessible trailer, we'll do that. But you're going to be jewel regardless. And I just sobbed because that was so loving. Mm -hmm. And he showed me how much he believed in me. I did it. You certainly did. And that is very reflective of your relationship with David Milch from the very, very beginning when you first joined the original cast of Deadwood 15 years ago. You know, it's so weird because when I first ran into David, I was overcoming that spinal cord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm beginning to think that every time I have surgery, David Milch is going to give me a job. 
But yes, he, he, I believe that he spiritually has been an angel in my path. And if I completed my part of the deal, my work in life, he would be there for me. Mm-hmm. And we're there for each other because I think we both inspire one another in truth. Jerry Jewell is one of the cast members of the Deadwood sequel movie, which premieres Friday. Mar- uh, May 30, I keep saying March 31st. Friday- you want to see it right now. Because <laughs> right, I do want to see it right now. Uh, which premieres Friday, May 31st on HBO, HBO Now, HBO Go, and HBO On Demand, which gives you plenty of time to go back. For people like me, acquaint yourself with the episode that you did not see before so that you can follow along with the Deadwood sequel movie, which premieres Friday May 31st on HBO to keep up with Jerry Jewell, jerryjewell.com. And let me ask you this, as an actor, was it difficult for you to step back into a character, Jewell, that you hadn't played in a few years, or was it like slipping back into a comfortable pair of shoes? Well, let me tell you this. I was in a lot of physical pain. Because like I said, I was not healed yet. Mm-hmm. I, I was just barely getting my ability back. And what I did psychologically, and it was a wise thing to do and allowed me to do the role, is I took my own physical pain and frustration and made it her mm-hmm. physical pain mm-hmm. and frustration, which played very well because she had a very hard life. Mm -hmm. And my surgery in this life made her life even harder. (laughs) 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 Oh, it was like slipping on a glove because I could get right back into her. Mm -hmm. And Jewel is one of the most amazing characters I've ever played. Mm -hmm. Well, very much so because not only does it remind us that there were people with, you know, cerebral palsy back then, even though they may not have known it as cerebral palsy, but there were people with disabilities back then. Plus, and this goes back to David Milch, I understand that he gave you a lot of latitude in creating Jewel in the first place, you know, going back to the original show. Yes, he did. We had a meeting at Paramount with all his writers, and he walked into my car afterwards, and he said, all right, Jay, I want you to forget everything we've talked about, everything you heard. And I thought, oh, my God, I blew it at last. <laughs> 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 and he said, no, I want to see what is in your heart, what is in your mind. I want you to write your own backstory to the character that you're going to play. Mm-hmm. You create her for me. And... I was like, oh, my God, what what an honor. And I read and read everything about the days and times of that time, the 1876 Deadwood, South Dakota. And one of the things I learned in my research was that cerebral palsy wasn't diagnosed until 1921. Mm-hmm. And truthfully, if she had lived, at that time, and born with head injury, and that is what cerebral palsy is, Mm -hmm. is head injury to the motor part of the brain. Mm -hmm. So if that were the case, the likelihood of her even surviving in that day and age were very slim. Or if she did live, they would keep her in a a room and feed her under a door. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't be seen in public. So David decided that she was going to be the exception to the rule. She was strong. She was going to be seen publicly. Mm -hmm. She was going to be a part of society. And I think I was kind of the only person in that show that wasn't real from Deadwood. Mm -hmm. It was fictional. But it gave the show heart because you know know very well how the show is. Mm -hmm. 
And I think my character and why David wanted me in the first place was because I gave the show heart and soul and spirit, a lightness, if you will, mm-hmm. to a dark show. Yeah. You give Jewel, you give the show a heart and soul and spirit. Plus, even though your character may be a fictional character, as you just alluded to, Jewel, uh, Jerry, <laughs> as, as you just alluded to, Jerry, because you saw her as the exception to the rule that makes her a survivor, that makes her a pioneer in that respect, which fits very much with the concept of the show in general, right? Yes, and what's interesting, you just brought this to my attention. I never would have thought of it this way, but in a way, Jerry Jewel is a pioneer. Mm -hmm. The first, So, in a way, it was me, somehow. Yeah. Oh, my God. I never even realized it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, hey... You know this better than me because you're an actor. I'm not an actor. I'm just a guy who talks to actors. But you know this better than me. Every good actor such as yourself, they look for the one or two things about the character they play, whether it's Jewel on Deadwood or any character you play, that speaks to them. And then, you know, you draw on what you know as a person, everything up to that point where you start playing that person, and you sort of use that to help breathe life into the character, right? Of course, absolutely. No question there. We're talking to Jerry Jewell, Jerry Jewell, Cousin Jerry, on The Facts of Life, and Jewell, the cleaning woman, on Deadwood. Jerry, along with Ian McShane, Tim Oliphant, Molly Parker, Brad Dorff, William Sanders, and Gerald McCraney will be reprising their roles in the long-awaited Deadwood sequel movie. The Deadwood sequel film premieres Friday, May 31st on HBO, HBO Now. <laughs> HBO Now, HBO Go, and HBO On Demand. Jerry's book, I'm Walking As Straight As I Can, Transcending Disability in Hollywood and Beyond, is a very candid and very poignant look at some of the many obstacles that Jerry has overcome throughout her life and career, some of which had to do with living with cerebral palsy, some of which had to do with accepting her sexuality, but a lot of which had to do with the nature of people itself and the entertainment industry itself i'm walking as straight as i can is available in hardcover paperback and as an ebook through amazon.com as well as an audiobook through audible.com jerry's website jerryjewel.com you mentioned that uh, you jerry jewel the person is a pioneer in many respects we mentioned in our open that uh, when you played uh, cousin jerry on facts of life You broke ground not only because it was the first time a network TV show had depicted a character with cerebral palsy on a regular basis, but the fact that you, an actual person with cerebral palsy, played that character. Nobody had done that before. No, it was never done before. I was the first person ever with a visible disability cast on a primetime series. Mm Mm-hmm. So it was breaking ground, and I'll mention something that what we talked about earlier, about seeing myself as a pioneer, Mm -hmm. you know, that's a part of me, and I've never really grasped totally what I've done. I mean, I'm I'm easily approachable. I talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. I I don't have a big head about it, but when I think about it, when I force myself to think about it, my God, wow. And I started doing stand-up in 78, and I was blessed to have Norman Lear Mm -hmm. in my audience who cast me on facts. Mm -hmm. So my success is not only me, it's a lot of people who open those doors. Absolutely. As we like to say on our program, Jerry, nobody succeeds in a vacuum. Yep. That's true. I don't know whether you watch Speechless on ABC, Jerry, but I'm... I have, yes. That's a good example of how far we've come since you broke ground as Cousin Jerry on facts. The fact that we're seeing more and more 
I mean, not only more and more characters with disabilities, but performers with disabilities playing those characters versus having an actor without that disability play that character. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we actors and performers and technicians, everybody with disabilities who's in the industry, writers, uh, have been diligently trying to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And we have made a lot of headway. Yeah. I mean, look at R.J. Mitty from Breaking Bad. He had cerebral palsy also. Mm -hmm. And he was a series regular. That was amazing for that day and time. Yeah. So I came in in the very beginning, and I think the person who does it first has the heaviest doors Mm -hmm. open, truthfully. And the fact that I am still here, that I'm still plugging away, is a miracle in itself. She's still here, she's still plugging away, and she's still walking as straight as she can, which is also the name of Jerry's memoir, I'm Walking As Straight As I Can, which is available in hardcover paperback and as an ebook through Amazon.com, wherever books are sold online. Jerry Jewell is also part of the cast of Carol of the Bells, Carol of the Bells, the new independent movie that also features Lee Purcell, Donna Mills, and Donna Pascal. Carol of the Bells will be one of the spotlight films at this year's Bentonville Film Festival, May 7th through May 11th in Bentonville, Arkansas. Jerry is going to stay with us for another segment. We hope you'll stay with us when we come back after this quick time out here on TV. Confidential. Got a product or service that you want our listeners to know about? Become an advertiser or underwriter of TV Confidential and let our brand help promote your brand. For more information, go to televisionconfidential.com forward slash advertise or visit the TV Confidential page at advertisecast.com. Ed Robertson, along with her friend Donna Allen Figueroa, who I understand has a new book out. Yes, it's entitled Fall Again Beginnings. It's the first part of a four part contemporary romantic series a set against the background of working actors. Something that you know a, little, a thing or two well, about. Well, you write what you know, and I have been working in the business for several years. It is not necessarily autobiographical, but it's based on... Sure, many of the experiences that the actors in my book have, many have happened to me, many have happened to friends of mine. It's not if you're looking for... Valley of the Dolls, it's not, it's grounded in reality. It is grounded in reality, and it's the first in a series. Yes. Called the Fall Again series. Fall Again. Which is available as a paperback as well as an ebook and in Kindle at fallagainseries.com. Ed Robertson, along with Benny Biffle and Sammy Schuster, the stars of The Misadventures of Biffle and Schuster. Hey, Benny. Yes, Sammy. Did you know that there's a new DVD out called The Misadventures of Biffle and Schuster? You're kidding. I thought it was married. I thought it was The Mrs. Adventures no, no, of no, Biffle no, no, and no, Schuster. No, it's single. It's oh, single. It's called The Misadventures like of Biffle and Schuster. It's on Kino Lorber. Oh, that's a big company. It is. They only release good stuff. In fact, this came out the same week as The Ten Commandments, the Paramount one that was in color came out. You're kidding. So you know they deal in quality. Yeah. Of course, this one's mostly in black and white, but there is some color in there, as I recall. Right. But the the movies are colorful in themselves. They certainly are. Mm -hmm. And we work with some wonderful people in there. That's right. And Joe Dante visited us on the set, the great director Joe Dante. What did he say about this collection of shorts? He said something along the lines of, and this is merely a quote, Forehead slapping funny. What impresses is the dogged authenticity to the era, which makes it all the more hilarious, says I, Joe Dante. Joe Dante. How about Mm, that? Mm -hmm. And he's a famous writer. Yes, he is. I wrote about that Inferno thing. He certainly did, yeah. Terrific, yeah. We're Biffle Biffle and Schuster, as you can see. see. No No one one else can make that statement louder than we. we. They say we're soporific and it's probably we. (laughs) We're We're Biffle Biffle and Schuster. Oh, we're We're Biffle Biffle and Schuster. (laughs) No, no. We're We're Biffle Biffle and Schuster. B-I-F-F-L Biffle. S-H-W-S to Schuster. Biffle and Schuster. Need we say more? Available wherever DVDs are sold through our friends at Kino Lorber. TV Confidential is available online for listening on demand as a podcast through iTunes, Spreaker, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and anywhere else where you could download podcasts. You can also listen to recent episodes of TV Confidential on demand for free on the Listen Now page at televisionconfidential.com. 
Hi, this is Richard Pryor Jr., and you're listening to TV Confidential. I was so convinced I was doing the right thing back then. What matters is what you do now. We all have things in our past. This has always been a very difficult time of year. I miss my baby boy. Carol pours her heart into these performances. She's always sizing up the crowd. That's Carol, or as I like to refer to her, Carol of the Bell. The Roberts with a reminder that the next edition of TV Confidential will premiere next week on this station at the usual time. We will play part two of our conversation with actor, producer, and cultural architect Robert Hooks. We hope you'll join us for that. In the meantime, on the line with us right now is actress Jerry Jewell. Jerry Jewell, cousin Jerry on The Facts of Life, and Jewell, the cleaning woman on Deadwood. Jerry Jewell can also be seen in the new independent film Carol of the Bells. Carol of the Bells is one of the spotlight films at this year's Bentonville Film Festival which runs May 7th through May 11th in Bentonville, Arkansas. For more information, BentonvilleFilmFestival.com Keep up with Jerry Jewell JerryJewell.com Jerry Jewell will be appearing in the Deadwood sequel movie along with Ian McShane, Timothy Oliphant, Molly Parker, Brad Dourif, William Sanderson and Gerald McCraney, among many others, they'll all be reprising their roles in the long-awaited Deadwood sequel film, which premieres Friday, May 31st on HBO, HBO Now, HBO Go, and HBO On Demand. This is going back to when you first played, Jewel. You told us a story about how David first talked to you and gave you a lot of leeway in creating the character, but I understand that when you first started filming the show and and first started seeing your first script, you were a little surprised at the blue language of the show. I was, because if you think about it, I had spinal cord surgery in 99, and I was really out of the loop as far as what was going on in Hollywood Mm -hmm. and HBO in particular. I didn't have HBO. (laughs) 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 So... I thought that it was going to be like a Western, like gun smoke, mm-hmm. and my character was going to be like Miss Kitty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then when I saw the script, I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. And it was an eye opener. Uh-huh. And I'm glad I did it. Um, I knew that some of my fans from Facts of Life would be appalled. I got a little bit of mail along those lines. How could Cousin Jerry say that word? (laughs) But you know what? It forced me to grow Mm -hmm. as an actress, and it was the wisest decision I ever made to do that series. Besides, it's not Cousin Jerry who's saying it. It's the woman who plays Cousin Jerry, and she's playing a brand-new character. Exactly. Exactly. I think we touched on this a little bit a little while ago, Jerry. Gave the listeners an idea of how challenging it was for David Milch and all the other people behind the scenes to get you and the other actors to coordinate your schedules so that you could all be there at the same time to make the movie a reality. I would imagine once those details were taken care of and when you reported to the set for the very first time for the movie, I would imagine it was kind of like, you know, a class reunion, a high school reunion, getting back in touch with all those actors. It was. It was surreal. It was so loving. You know, that's the one thing I can honestly say about Deadwood. There is no ego in that show. Mm -hmm. And, you you know, ego kind of thrives in Hollywood. You know, you always have these big egos to deal with. There were no egos. From the top all the way to the bottom. I mean, we were all equal. Mm -hmm. And we were all supportive of one another. And I think that's what makes Deadwood so magical and so real. It's because we're able to work with one another on an even keel and give each other the best support that every actor can give one another. It was just amazing. I, I don't think I'll ever have an experience like that again. It, it was far more rewarding than any high school reunion. <laughs> <laughs> On that, I agree with you 150%. But from what you're telling me, it sounds like, you know, the kind of camaraderie that you and the other cast members had, 
you know, again, I'm not an actor. I just get this from talking to actors. But it sounds like that camaraderie, that teamwork, that spirit of selflessness amongst each other. From what I understand, that's almost like the way stage actors bond in a way. That's a good analogy. That's very, yes, you're right. You <laughs> have that feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Just so much respect for one another. We're talking to Jerry Jewell. Cousin Jerry on The Facts of Life and Jewel, the cleaning woman, on Deadwood. Jerry will be reprising her role as Jewel in the long-awaited Deadwood sequel movie, which will premiere Friday, May 31st on HBO, HBO Now, HBO Go, and HBO On Demand. The Deadwood movie comes nearly 13 years after the drama concluded in 2006 and follows the 10-year reunion of the camp to celebrate South Dakota's statehood. Former rivalries are reignited. Alliances are tested and old wounds are reopened as all are left to navigate the inevitable changes that modernity and time have wrought. Jerry Jewell can also be seen in the new independent film, Carol of the Bells. Carol of the Bells is one of the spotlight films at this year's Bentonville Film Festival, which runs May 7th through May 11th in Bentonville, Arkansas. For more information, BentonvilleFilmFestival.com. Deadwood sequel movie will premiere Friday, May 31st on HBO, HBO Now, HBO Go, and HBO On Demand. Before I forget, Carol Spenny recently stepped down from playing Big Bird on Sesame Street. And uh, I don't know whether our listeners know this, but uh, you worked with Carol Spinney as Big Bird on Sesame Street. What was it like to work with him? He was one of the sweetest, kindest souls I have ever met. And I'm just glad he lived through the episode. (laughs) 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 Yeah, um, it was 1984, and I was in a scene where I was roller skating with Big Bird. Mm -hmm. And when we rehearsed it, the wardrobe department had forgotten my skate. They didn't give me the skate until the next day in front of a live audience of parents and their four-year-olds. So I went on stage for the first time with skates, and Big Bird was on skate, and I was going very fast, and I realized, oh, my God, I never learned how to stop on these things as a kid. And I knew that either I was going to slam into the camera or I was going to roll right into the audience, or I was going to hit Big Bird. And I hit Big Bird so hard that his head fell off. Oh. (laughs) And it rolled across the stage, and these four-year-olds were screaming that I killed them. (laughs) Uh, And Carol Spinney told me years later, years and years later, he said, you know, you were the only celebrity guest that ever decapitated me. <laughs> and, and I have to tell you, I let go of my head to save my life. Yeah. Because if he didn't, it would have hurt him badly. Yeah. God knows what could have been done. So yeah. he let go of his head to save his own life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> God, Absolutely. But you don't think about this at the time, and you certainly didn't think about it then because your main concern was to stop your motion and not hurt Big Bird. But when you look no, back... No, I thought that he was so soft with those feathers and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that he would just grab me with his two wings mm-hmm. and he would be cool. Yeah. But when you think about it now, the fact that uh, you were invited to be on Sesame Street, I mean, that's another way of showing little kids that if you happen to live with a disability, that doesn't stop you from getting on roller skates. That doesn't stop you from doing anything. Yes, and I would have to say that Sesame Street was proactive in hiring several people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. All the time it was on the air, it supported children with disabilities, big time. Let's see. We've got the big Deadwood movie coming up. Jerry, is there anything else uh, coming down the pike that you're able to tell our listeners about that we can promote on our show? Well, I just completed uh, an indie film, which is the show in the film festival. It might go directly to DVD. It's called Carol of the Bells, and I'm working with R.J. Mitty. He's in it also. Uh, A wonderful, wonderful script. I have a cameo. There's all kinds of wonderful actors and actresses in that film. 
a beautiful film, Carolus Bell. Donna Mills is in it, Ooh. Lee Purcell, Donna Pascal, RJ Mitty, myself. So it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful cast. Carol of the Bells with the wonderful, wonderful cast, including Lee Purcell, Donna Pascal, Donna Mills. That is making the film festival circuit, but it will be available to the public later in the year? I think so, yes. I'm pretty sure. Okay, we will keep an eye on that. In the meantime, don't miss uh, Jerry Jewell, along with Ian McShane, Timothy Oliphant, William Sanderson, and the rest of the cast in the Deadwood sequel film, which premieres Friday, May 31st on HBO, HBO Now, HBO Go, and HBO on the man, Jerry's book, I'm Walking As Straight As I Can, available Amazon.com, wherever books are sold online. Jerry's website, jerryjewel.com. Jerry Jewel, it is always such a pleasure to chat with you on our program. I look forward to our next visit. Likewise. Thank you so much for having me back. Stay with us, folks. We'll be right back. If you haven't been listening to TV Confidential, this is who you're missing. Ben Connie Stevens. Don Wells. Eric Braden. Tommy Camille. Jansen Williams. Don Most. Troy Finnis. Peter Marshall. Sherry Alberoni. George Slaughter. Dan Castellaneta. Taylor Hicks. Lindsay Wagner. Loretta Swift. And many, many more of your favorite celebrities and people behind the scenes in the world of television. That's TV Confidential. Every week on this station and every day online at televisionconfidential.com. One more item, the Disney Anna Fan Club Collectible Show and Sale is the place to go to find the very best Disney collectibles and products, old and new, for purchase. This year's Disney Anna Fan Club Collectible Show and Sale takes place Sunday, May 5th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Delta by Marriott Hotel, located at the corner of Chapman and Harbor, south of Disneyland and Garden Grove, California. Everything Disney will be there that day, including collectibles of all ages, artwork, figurines, stamps, postcards, CDs, and albums. Special guests scheduled to appear that day will include Will Ryan, Margaret Tinkerbell Kelly, and TV Confidential's Greg Airbar. There will also be a silent auction, plus door prizes, raffles, and a whole lot more. For tickets and more information, go to DisneyAnnaFanClub.org, DisneyAnnaFanClub.org. Be part of our conversation. If you have thoughts on what you've heard tonight, whether you agree or disagree, we want to hear from you. Send us an email, talk at tvconfidential.net, talk at tvconfidential.net, and we'll work your comments into our next program. One more item I want to tell you about Uber, the mobile app that connects you with the driver for immediate transportation. How does Uber work? Go to uber.com forward slash go forward slash TV Confidential to download the app, uber.com forward slash go forward slash TV Confidential. Then with the touch of a button, you will have a driver curbside in just a matter of minutes. Uber has drivers in cities across the country and around the world. Plus, you can choose to be driven in a black car, SUV, or you can choose UberX, the low-cost Uber, for a ride in a hybrid or mid-range car. Payment is seamless and cashless. Build your card on file with no need to tip. Enter promo code TV Confidential, all one word, promo code TV Confidential, after you download the app to receive a first free ride up to $20. To sign up directly with the promo code included, go to get.uber.com forward slash go forward slash TV Confidential. Get dot uber dot com forward slash go forward slash tv confidential 